Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at the GMK87. Yes, I didn't mispronounce it. It is not the GMK67, but it's the GMK87. The latest from Zoya. Although I have heard that they have an aluminum version of the 75%, but I have not seen that yet. So today we are taking a look at the US version. So it appears that they would have an ISO version, though I have not seen that as well. Looks like it does have a single color, a rainbow color version and an RGB version. We have the RGB and it looks like it will be coming in quite a few selection of colors from black and white, blue, red, yellow, pink, green, and purple. So it looks like the same color choices that we have for the GMK67. Now, as we can see from the back of the box here, not only have they kept the knob as they did in the ever popular GMK67 or the daily post board on on forums I mean almost every day I see two to three new GMK builds and they're all lovely and it's a great kit because it sounds pretty good stock practically regardless of switch that you put in there so we've added a TFT LCD screen here and it looks like we have a power light as well we have a standard TKL layout it's not the Sangin bottom row but we do have the F13 space and we have the standard um, it looks like the standard 1.25 modifiers on the right of the space bar one thing eagle-eyed observers may have caught that it is a via keyboard this is going to be interesting I don't know how via is going to handle the TFT control and this is a three mode so we'll have to check that out I'm guessing if nothing else, uh, the EK68, which is Epomaker, the company that shall not be named, um, their version of the GMK67, what they do is they make the USB dongle um, actually read as a device in VIA so that you can actually um, make changes to VIA wirelessly over the 2.4. So we'll have to see if that's the same case here. Before we dive into the keyboard, let's see what we have for accessory entry. We have a very decent nylon braided USB-C to USB-A cable. We have a non-branded wire, keycap and switch puller with a little bit of uh, the grippers that I like. And that would be that. So we have a little bit of piece of foam protecting it. And let's go ahead and pull this out. We also have the manual that was hiding underneath the keyboard. All right, so for the display, looks like we're going to have to download a separate file. Um, before I publish, I'll make sure to go ahead and get a link to that um, from Zoya so that I can include it down below. So as we can see, we have what looks very similar to the GMK67. Of course, I don't have one within reach, which should not be the case I should always have a GMK 67 within reach <laughs> but we do see that we have and please if you buy this keyboard don't take it apart just to take off this plastic sheet that's a PET layer and that helps punch it out first so that you can go ahead and put your switches in without any issue because that's going to make this keyboard sound much nicer with that PET layer. Oh, let me see if I can get it in there. Oh, see, once you punch that hole out, it makes it quite easy for it to just go on through and punch the, because the rest of the pins should go through quite easy. Now for five pin switches, you may need to um, help it along and punch out the holes for the side. But I have found for the most part that the five pin ones will go through as long as you've gotten that center hole taken care of. You just wanna be very gentle and careful when you push it in. We don't wanna bend any switches or pop out any hot swap sockets. So you see it goes through, it just requires a little bit more assistance. Now someone did ask me if this is as difficult to open up as the GMK67, it looks like it's going to be somewhat similar. 
Now with the GMK67, I made a video, I'll link down below, of how I open it. But basically I just, yeah, because the it has the two part cases that kind of meet right about here. So you stick this down and then go up and then you slide it across to unclip the clips. But, oh yeah, it looks like, actually this seems a little easier than the GMK67. I don't think I'll have to make a video opening this one up. You can actually see the back side of the clips in the case right there. So as I always state, make sure to go all the way around and unclip as many clips as possible before pulling it apart. Because if you don't, you could possibly break one of those clips and meaning that the keyboard case will not shut all the way properly. Once we get all those plastic clips undone, be careful because I'm sure... Oh, no, we don't have a cable. Ah, all right. So here we see the screen attached to the PCB as well as the knob. So we're they're foregoing the top row. But, I mean, how many times have you used scroll lock? <laughs> um, here we see that we have three LEDs that come through the diffuser right there, um, which is pretty cool. And then... Pick it up, we see that we have a battery connector as well as a daughter board connector for that 3000 milliamp hour battery. And that's pretty decent. And we have a piece of silicone rubber that doesn't quite cover the entire case, but hmm, find that a little odd, but otherwise normal. And we also have this sheet of open cell foam. And there we can see there's the connector for the screen. And there's, it would be a connector for something else, but I don't know. I don't know what that could be too. No idea. So there's probably, this PCB is definitely gonna have some variants from what I can see so far. So let's go ahead and get this back in place. I will um, come back to this at a later date and do a full uh, mod, but right now I want to go with it as stock as possible. So I just wanted to see how easy it was to open up, and it does seem to be easier than the GMK67. Now, I'm not going to take this off until I can cut me a piece of um, film, screen protector film for cell phones. I like to put those on there because these are... Yep, it's plastic, so uh, they get scratched pretty easy. So I find it best to just go ahead and protect that before I start messing around. Close it up. We just go all the way around, make sure to snap all those clips back into place, and we have it put back together. Now, I do like the knob on this one. It's knurled, and it's um, it feels more substantial. It's like a metal knob and it does have the plastic collar screwed on in there so it's actually a metal knob it does feel heavier um, than the previous one so and we can see the amount of flex that we have in there now someone mentioned about the flex cuts i actually uh got one of these pc plates from what i could tell it seems like it's a it's similar to the ek68 that has the PC plate, because there's an EK68 with a steel plate. Um, I didn't notice any difference in sound, just a little bit flexier, but not really that much more. So, let's go ahead and plug it in and see what these lights look like. Nice. So we can see that there is already an animation loaded on there, and that it is in color. I'll have to get a film protector here soon so that I can show that all the way. Uh, and I'll have to go and download the um, software from Zoya. Now, let me see about these stabilizers. We do have holes on the PCB for screw-in stabilizers, so that will probably be a possibility that you're going to have to go low profile from what I've seen so that you have enough space for the stabilizer to fit and not interfere with the plate. Now... Oh, wow. 
Do my eyes deceive me? No, these are completely dry. Hmm. I've been seeing that as a trend lately, but it's not been um, that bad as I would imagine non-lubricated stabilizers would be. Just the specs. Today we took a look at the Zoya GMK87, a plastic three-mode TKL with a customizable TFT screen and a programmable knob. This keyboard comes weighing in at 670 grams bare and around 940 grams fully loaded. It includes a 3000 milliamp hour battery, a PC flex cut gasket mounted plate, foam dampening as well as a PET layer. It manufacturer retails for around $52 on several AliExpress stores. This keyboard is programmable with VIA over both wired and 2.4 gigahertz connections, but it is not a full via implementation. The screen can be updated with a separate Windows executable. The chin of this keyboard sits at 23 millimeters, while the back sits at 36 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of seven degrees. Raising the first pair of included flip feet will raise the back to 42 millimeters, changing the typing angle to 11 degrees. When flipping out the final pair of feet, the back will raise to 49 millimeters and provide a typing angle of 13 degrees. So I accidentally either hit pause or stop uh, during a section of my building. So um, I'm just gonna get right back to it. I've gone ahead and put on a, um, I've cut out a bit of a screen protector uh, to protect the screen here. This is just a uh, film from an old, uh, phone screen protector that I don't have the phone I don't have anymore so and I thought I had the rest of the sheet here yeah so basically I just used a caliper to measure um, the parameters of that screen and I cut it out uh, from a screen protector most of these uh, customizable screens are just a plastic uh, layer above it so that plastic is usually pretty soft, gets scratched pretty easy, so I've always found it best to put a yeah, plastic protector, though. This one does have a bubble, it's no big deal. So for this build, I decided to go ahead and finally get to these Leo Bong V4s, or Greywood V4s that I've had uh, for a minute. Uh, they are a definite update from the V3s. Um, these are stock, but the ping is significantly minor it's it's hardly noticeable and it does have these um these basically these led light diffusers now sometimes i've seen um that these came separate in a bag inside of the switches and i thought that putting them in putting the switches in the board and then putting the diffusers in was a good idea but Basically, that diffuser is really the only support for this clip to take it out. It turned out not to be the best of ideas. So if you do get these uh, switches that include a um, light diffuser, I suggest, well, just my recommendation would be to put them in the switch first before installing it on the motherboard. So anyway, um, we do have some pretty good dampening, um, as we can see from when we opened it up. But we do see that we have a layer of PET plastic, which um, is going to give us that nice poppy sound. Now, this keyboard definitely has a different sound profile to its little brother, um, older brother, the GMK67. Uh, but it is built differently. I have, in my experience, I have found keyboards... <clears throat> See, if we only had this section of the keyboard, think of this as just a 60%, there would only be one open cavity. So you're going to have a different construction. So there's going to be a different sound profile. So any compacts, any 60%, anything that, that, that has only one opening for keys to come through is going to have a, basically it's a, like a speaker, but it's only got, you know, one exit for the sound to go out of. When we have keyboards like this that have different clusters, like the function row cluster and the navigation cluster and all that, there's going to be different places for the sound to escape. It's not one 
you know, a hollow opening to the world, it's several. So that's where I think the sound comes into. Now, can we make this keyboard sound better? I'm pretty sure of that. I do plan to come back to this keyboard and um, apply some mods so it and see if I can get it to sound as good, if not better, uh, than the GMK67. I don't think it sounds worse than the GMK67. I just think it has a different sound profile than its um, smaller, older brother. <laughs> um, but it does have some nice light, light effects. The, um, the Via is not a full implementation. So um, I have yet to upload any images. I've, <laughs> it's still the holidays. A lot of people have been asking me questions about this keyboard. I wanted to at least get this out so you guys can see what it looks like on the inside, um, see what it's got. I will come back to it, get a little bit more into uh, VIA and the, I mean it's got, it uses VIA. It's just there's certain, like if you want to send a key code directly, it's not going to work. I'm assuming that they're not using QMK as a base, that they're using some other software and just sending out or using via communication protocols, but that's just a guess that I have. I'll also get into the RGBs, uh, show the uploading, uh, try to figure out. It's probably going to be the same thing, like a 240 uh, by 120 resolution or something to that effect. Uh, but most images can be shrunken down. I mean, as long as it's in a um, landscape mode like that. So, anyway, I, I personally, I think that this is a it is a nice TKL, uh, especially for the price I paid $52. I've seen it variate, but just like with the GMK67, uh, we saw that variate and get down to as low as $20. Um, I'd like to see this at $20, $25. It, it, it really is just at that point, you just can't argue. And um, like I said, the VIA can be done over the 2.4 gigahertz, which is one VIA file and it can be done over USB, which is a different VIA file. I still have to update my VIA repository, but when I do, I will put in the VIA file for it wired, because uh, you can't host both of them, because it'll try to find it as the same device, and it just won't detect it at all. So, um, this is my first time with a Cherry, um, even though it's die sub, they're nice thick caps. Um, I like them. Uh, the again the Leo Bog Greywood V4s they are stock so they have minimal amount of ping but not that much. Uh, when I come back I'll probably switch them out for some tactiles, um, but I'm definitely going to do some mods and see where I can get. But right now it has a pretty thocky um, sound profile, whereas the GMK67 is a little bit more poppy. This one has more of a thocky. Obviously the switches and everything and the keycaps are going to you know, help define that more. But this is with Cherry. I'm, I'm doing my best to try to stick with Cherry for stock sound test because that's the most common keycap profile. But when I do mods and everything, I'll try XDAs and SAs and, and different profiles like that. So anyway, uh, today I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the GMK87. I do hope that I answered um, and because I did uh, pose up, did make a post on our budget cubes, and there were some questions that I think I, I answered them all. Um, the screen pretty good with color. Uh, yeah, I hope I answered your questions. But if you have any more, I will be coming back to this soon enough. I just I've got to get through the hours I have sitting and editing right now. If you have any any questions or anything that you'd like for me to take a look at when I come back to this, please drop them down in the comments below. Let's get a conversation going. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on. <laughs>